Hello, everybody, and welcome to our discussion of the cash disbursements budget. By now, we've already completed the cash receipts budget, and we're moving on to, again, the cash disbursements. So this is generally the second cash-related budget after the cash receipts. There's really no requirement to go in that order necessarily because they're both completely separate. But after we're done with both of these budgets, we're going to merge them together to create the overall cash budget. There are additional things in the overall cash budget related to financing, but we certainly need these two items. So again, as an overview of the budgets, we had the sales budget, which we will need for the cash receipts budget. Then we developed the production budget, and we had the direct materials, direct labor, manufacturing overhead budgets to support the production budget, and the SG&A budget. Notice that today we're talking about cash disbursements, payments of cash for a variety of things, whether they're production related or not. So it's different than the cash receipts budget, where it only related to sales and collecting on those sales. Now we're paying for all of our expenses. So the cash disbursements budget tends to be a little bit more complex than the cash receipts budget. But we also have amounts that we may not have paid this month, and that relates to an accounts payable, which goes to the budgeted balance sheet. So the, the more complicated portion of this is just materials purchases, because we generally have a pattern, well, maybe we'll pay for a certain amount this month, and if they give us 30 days to pay, we may roll a little bit of that in the next month as well. So materials purchases amounts from the materials budget. We're going to pay for labor, so we need to know the labor costs from that budget. And we need to know the manufacturing overhead because we're going to pay for it minus any depreciation amount there was on that budget because that's not a cash flow in this period. The same thing applies to the selling general administrative cost. We're not paying for depreciation, so we have to back that out. Now the payment pattern I mentioned is usually just materials for the SG&A and the labor and all that stuff. We're just kind of assuming we pay for it that same month. Again, labor with the payroll sometimes rolls a little bit into the next month, but for the most part it's kind of a wash because you would have had about the same amount carrying over from last month as well, assuming labor remains pretty steady. What that boils down to is this whole payment pattern discussion that we dealt with in the cash receipts budget as well, it's just in the materials purchase budget. Now, that depends on how long the vendor gives us. Maybe they'll give us 60 days. That's a little odd, a little long, longer than usual. But we're going to assume it's just a regular 30-day period. The other difference between this and the cash receipts budget is we can't estimate a bad debt because we're the ones that owe the money. We can't plan to say, hey, we're not going to pay 3% of our bill every month. That's not a valid plan. You're going to lose your vendors very quickly. So that part makes it a little bit easier because you know 100% of your purchases you're going to pay for. It's just a question of when. Now, very similar to the cash receipts budget, we're starting the current month with a beginning accounts payable, which was some portion of last month's purchases that we haven't paid for yet. Now we're going to pay for them. Likewise, the last quarter of our, or the last month of our quarter, we'll have an ending accounts payable that we're going to carry over to the next period. For this reason, this budget also ties in the balance sheet. The cash receipts budget tied into the uh, accounts receivable. The cash payments budget ties into the accounts payable. Here we have an example of our cash disbursements budget. So. We'll see here that they're telling us we have a beginning AP balance and an ending AP balance in a few lines. And the reason I have those is because they tie to the balance sheet. We want to see this explicit number. For April, it's very important. For this first month, it's important because this is some percentage of March's purchases that we're now just going to pay for in April. So instead of having a separate line for it elsewhere, we have it as beginning AP balance. So the 215000 is some percentage of last month's purchases that now we're collecting. And in this case, it must be 60% of March's purchases because that's the second month. Uh, by the way, when you're seeing this problem, they'll usually tell you, hey, you have a 40% payment in the current month, 60% in the next month. They'll give you that data. 
So 215,000 must have been March's 60%, and now we're collecting it in April. We're also, or we're, I'm sorry, we're paying in April. We're also paying for 40% of April's purchases in April. So 40% of purchases, 90,300. This would be multiplied, this 40% would be multiplied by the purchase budget. If we go back to that budget, we'd see that number multiply by 40% and you'd get this amount. So that tells you, by the way, the other 60% of April's purchases are going to be left over in ending AP that they're going to be collected in May. So here we have two items that we're paying in April, plus we have labor cost just straight from the labor budget, plus manufacturing overhead less depreciation because that's non-cash. So we would this formula if we had an Excel would be manu it'd be linking back to the manufacturing overhead budget, subtracting out the depreciation. Same thing with the selling general administrative. This would be linking back to that budget, carving out depreciation. So in total, we're we're uh, paying all of these cash disbursements: the two inventory purchase budgets or purchase amounts, the labor, manufacturing overhead, and selling general administrative. Now with May, it gets a little bit easier because now we have a line for each one. You can clearly see what these payments are for. 60% of April's purchases are going to be paid in May. Now notice that's also the same as the ending AP balance from April, which led to the beginning AP balance for May. But here's how you would actually calculate it. It shows you the description. And we're going to pay for 40% of May's purchases in May. We're going to bring in our labor cost, manufacturing overhead minus depreciation, uh, the selling general administrative minus depreciation, and we'll get our total cash disbursements for May. June follows the same note, but notice we have the ending AP balance in June, which also becomes the quarterly AP ending balance. Everything else is the same. Here are the three cash disbursements we've made, about $2.5 million. So we have completed the cash receipts budget, and now we've completed the cash disbursements budget. We're going to carry them on to talk about the overall cash budget in the next section. So hopefully this helps to clarify how to work one of these types of problems. Thank you for your time.